Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my July favourites. So yes, I am back here in Melbourne. I'm actually just here for a couple of days before I head off to New Zealand on a music tour. So we got back from the UK two days ago. So I thought I would quickly film my favourites here and then we have to pack tomorrow and then we leave on Tuesday. <laughs> so it's been a very busy very busy time. I still have some vlogs from the UK that are going to go up after this so, so if you do get a little bit confused as to the order of things I really extended out my vlogs from the UK um, just to cover the fact that I've got a couple of weeks in New Zealand where I'm going to be filming that all as one video. I've got a very sort of specific vision in mind for that so I needed to kind of expand my UK content out and while I was over in Europe like there was so much I could film and um, sort of flesh out of that trip so that is why in my next vlog we're heading back over to London. <laughs> obviously all these favourites are kind of travel related favourites, they're all things that I obviously took with me or experienced while I was over there so it's a little bit different to normal but you know I'll still run the favourites in a similar way as to how I normally do it. Starting out with skincare, so my favourite skincare product of the month has been a sunscreen. Now I will be doing a travel skincare video for you in a couple of weeks time but this is a product that I probably won't be able to show in that video because I plan to film it in New Zealand and this is nearly run out so I won't be able to take it with me, I have to take a different product but it's a sunscreen. It's by the brand Can Make and it's the Mermaid Skin Gel UV SPF 50 PA four pluses <laughs> so it's a very 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 high protection facial sunscreen it is a chemical screen not a physical screen but it's got very very high quality chemical screens that are UV stable so they don't break down as easily as like other UV filters that's typically why I prefer using physical sunscreens over chemical screens because zinc oxide is really superior in terms of like photo stability a lot of Asian sunscreens use chemical screens in them that are not available like in the US say so they're really really quite superior in formulation this one in particular is if you hate the feeling of sunscreen on your skin I would highly recommend this product it is very much a kind of gel consistency it leaves absolutely zero white cast I do believe this is the clear formula there is a white formula I haven't tried that one yet I do plan on trying it just to see if that one leaves a white cast but I don't think it would just judging from the reviews it's one that I'd absolutely recommend for anyone with a deeper complexion all those that just hate any sign of a white cast at all I mean I'm so fair so a white cast doesn't really bother me most of the time but it is quite nice that this one is just completely invisible on the skin the only thing is that it's quite a small tube obviously you only get uh, 40 grams of product so it's not very much so that's why I've like gone through it in a month because I've only got a little bit left and I had to actually stop using it in the UK and I used a different one that I had with me I had a little carry-on bag of skincare that I used just while I was like in transit and stuff and that had a sunscreen in it so I actually swapped over to using that just so I could save some so I could show you guys and talk about it. I plan to do a review on a bunch of sunscreens in September so I also want to hold on to a little bit of it for that as well but I absolutely love this product so much I'd really recommend it. It sits beautifully under makeup. It does leave a little bit of a slight sort of glossy look to the skin. It is a wee bit tacky but it does sort of dry down so if you leave it on your skin for a bit before you put your makeup on you won't even like notice you're wearing it like it's just it's really good. It's also fragrance free which is wonderful so I'll pop a link in the description to where you can grab this I got it from YesStyle with a gift card that they gifted me before we move on to makeup I did want to talk about one more sort of skincare product or skincare products you could say um, which I won't be able to demonstrate for you right now but I have used them in a couple of vlogs I think it was a few vlogs ago I used them they're the I'm from masks so I've got the honey mask here which I've talked about before in my big like Korean skincare routine video review and I also have this new one it's the volcanic mask I do have two of the other ones as well which I haven't used as much so I didn't want to like kind of include them today but these two I've used heaps and I absolutely love them they work so well like I have never seen my face look quite so clear and have the redness reduced like this volcanic mask works so well in the t-zone um, obviously because it's a more of a clay mask it's going to absorb oil so I use that one typically in the t-zone and it just it actually makes my skin look better when you wash it off which is the goal of a mask but so many masks don't do that and then I use the honey mask on my sort of cheek area just to keep that nice and nourished I also like using this one all over as well if I'm feeling particularly dehydrated but um, I'd like doing kind of multi-masking and tailoring it to my skin because I do have that kind of 
combo-y, oily sort of skin type, but they're not that cheap. They are about 50 something Australian dollars a bottle. So they're, they're more high end price point, but I see results with them. I think they're fantastic. I think this honey mask is a lot better than the pharmacy honey mask that I have. Like I see way better results. It has a really beautiful authentic honey smell. Whereas the pharmacy one, I just don't think there's much honey in that one. And it's more about the warming effect. It's kind of a nice mask to apply, but I don't see as good of results at all. So I highly recommend getting the I'm from one over the pharmacy one. If you've been kind of tossing up the two. I don't really have much to compare with the volcanic mask one because I'm not really usually into clay masks. Um, I've tried a few in the past and they're just like so drying but this one doesn't seem to dry my skin out. Particularly when I wash it off as well I like to kind of massage the chip, the honey through the mud and kind of like massage it into the skin and then wash it off and I think that's like a nice way of removing it. Again I'll have links to those below that also from Yes Style as well. While I was traveling I had obviously not very much makeup with me. I had about two of every product uh, for a whole month which for a makeup enthusiast is not that much, doesn't give you too much variety, but um, I did feel like it was a good amount. I also bought quite a few things while I was over in the UK, but I'm not including any new products because I've hardly had a chance to try them. So you'll probably hear about those products in my August favorites. But if you're curious to see what was in my makeup bag in its entirety, I'd recommend watching my, the little get ready with me that I did on my travel makeup bag. So I'll have that link below. I remember but I did have a couple of products that I took with me that I just used a lot and really was always like man that looks really good so the first is the L'Oreal True Match foundation this is in the shade N0.5 fresh ivory this is the American bottle uh, the Australian one looks slightly different the Australian shade is very very similar but perhaps just a tiny bit more yellow I, I do just prefer this shade because this is more like a true sort of beigey neutral it's not too yellow and obviously i don't really have a warm skin tone at all i just don't like the way that super cool foundations look on me because they go too pink so i love that this isn't a very pink or yellow foundation the australian packaging though does come with a pump and stuff so some people might prefer that but i don't mind doing the old school finger over the top thing but the reason i'm including this foundation is this is the foundation i wore sort of more day to day while i was away and my gosh, it just looks so good on the skin. Like my skin looks like skin when I wear this. It has about a medium coverage. So it does give you like pretty, pretty decent coverage, but it's nothing too heavy. And it just leaves a beautiful finish. So put a few dots of that around and I use a damp, this is the Juno Velvet Sponge is what I was using while I was away. Damp sponge, again, just helps to make it look really natural. I don't love this foundation with a brush. I do prefer it with a sponge. I think it just gives it, it that really beautiful skin-like finish. I did buy quite a few foundations while I was overseas. So for the last couple of days, I've been like wearing a lot of those ones and just really enjoying trying them out. But um, yeah, now this foundation is just like a tried and true favorite. Now I have got a little bit of the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer on underneath. I find that that helps with longevity. This foundation doesn't have like insane longevity or anything it's kind of standard it's not bad wearing but it's not necessarily a long wearing product so i find that the hourglass veil mineral primer really helps to extend the wear of this so you can see as i said it has a medium coverage it's not going to come anywhere close to covering blemish like that which is a pretty freshly picked pimple so my next favorite is an eyeshadow so i'm just laying down a bit of a base in my crease this is nars kingston this is a forever favorite so not necessarily this month specific i pretty much have used this solidly for like four months now yeah i'm just defining my crease a little bit but the product i wanted to sort of highlight today is a liquid eyeshadow that i just wore so so much while i was away it is the Stila liquid shimmer and glow liquid eyeshadow in kitten so what i do is i take the little applicator and i just brush it straight onto a brush like just sort of pat it straight onto there on a flat shader this is by hourglass and then i just apply it straight to the lid like that it's so much easier than trying to apply it with the applicator it just gives you way more control applying it straight to the brush and that way then you can just pat it straight in and it's just such a beautiful color like it is rose gold but it's got quite a sort of neutral sort of tone to it it's not anything too rosy which i really like because i'm just moving away from enjoying sort of rosy tones on my complexion i think especially because i use such cool sort of taupey colors in the crease and that 
I think something that is like got a little bit of warmth to it but isn't too too golden or anything it works really really well the great thing about this hourglass brush is that it's a little bit fluffy too so you can apply it but then kind of like turn it on its side and just sort of blend it into the crease a bit as well so it's not just like a harsh cut crease sort of line so yeah really really love that you guys have heard me talk about you've heard me talk about a lot of these products before but these are the ones that i just reached for heaps in my makeup bag while I was overseas, so I really wanted to kind of highlight them today. And then my last favorite has actually been a lipstick that I have worn heaps and heaps while I was overseas. You guys know that for like the last sort of six months or so, I've just been mainly sticking to nude lips, um, usually a lip gloss, sometimes a lipstick, but I just got really lazy with lipstick. <laughs> Once the term finished up last year in like sort of October, um, I was then doing a lot of my PhD work and stuff obviously at home I mean, I was around this place so much that I just didn't feel the need to wear like a bright lip and, it, and then it became really foreign to me like I'd put it on I'd be like no I don't want to wear that today and I'd like take it off and just put gloss on so I got I guess really uncomfortable with wearing bright lips but when I went away I was like no I'm gonna like get back into wearing them again on a daily basis like not just keep it for special occasions um, and so I took a couple of red lipsticks with me one of them was like a classic bright red but then I also took this one which is a little bit more out of my comfort zone it's the Lancôme L'Absolu Rouge in Rouge Flamboyant which is 198 that's the number the Lancôme lipsticks are beautiful they're very gorgeous packaging and you like push the little button and it pops out the formula is beautiful it is a very sort of comfort matte sort of formula it's not drying it will still transfer a little bit but it does hold up like I find like this lip Lipstick will last me hours and hours, even with eating. As you can see, it's got quite a sort of orangey base to it. It is still what I'd class as a red, but it's definitely a warm toned red, which never used to be my cup of tea. I'd usually always reach for like a real cherry red, but I think just being over in Europe, um, it was summertime obviously over there, so this felt like a really appropriate color to wear and I think it also pairs really nicely with that kitten eyeshadow just because this has a little bit of that warm sort of rose gold hue to it that they're, they're just tied together really well there's something about this color as well that doesn't make your teeth look yellow like some warm based reds can just make like are not flattering on your teeth at all but these one this one I think is pretty good I don't have the whitest teeth in the world because I drink coffee and tea but this actually makes my teeth almost look brighter which is a real rarity I think it has just enough red in it so that it's not like a straight up orange this is an extremely long explanation on a lipstick color but I think it's even got a little bit of coral in it and I think that's why it's quite brightening and really flattering on my complexion even though I'm more of a cool undertone my next favorite is actually a dress now it's one I picked up in the UK um, and I'm just going to insert like a picture of it to show you guys of me wearing it I took heaps of Instagram photos at Kew Gardens wearing this dress it's from mango I wasn't super interested in buying a lot of clothes while I was overseas so I only bought like a couple of things a pair of jeans this necklace which is not clothing but I really like it little Viking boat I got this in Copenhagen it was a lot colder in Copenhagen and Amsterdam than I expected but it was actually hotter in London than I sort of anticipated for so I felt like another maxi dress was going to be quite useful and it really was it's a linen blend so it's really nice and soft and it breathes well I just love the style of it with the buttons I like that it is actually maxi like it goes right to my ankles so it's not a midi length because that's not as flattering on my body type so I love that looks cool with sneakers but you can also obviously wear it with sandals really really happy with that piece um, it is brand new so if you are interested in it if you've seen it in my Instagram pictures and really liked it then you should be able to go and pick it up from Mango right now which is pretty cool I just realized I'm not wearing my glasses <laughs> I was like something about my face looks a bit different to normal I wear these specs which you guys are always asking about my specs these are from spec savers and they are Balmain brand oh man they were quite dirty and they've now made my white t-shirt really dirty <laughs> oh well see the wash anyway I'm short-sighted so I wear it to be able to see things far away and sometimes I'll wake up and like go most of the day around my house without putting them on because I can sort of see what I need to in close proximity but if I'm like walking out and about outside I like cannot read signs I can't read what trams coming towards me and things like that so um okay so the next favorite is a really weird thing to put in a favorite so it's a supplement and it is melatonin which I used to defeat my jet lag so I hope this is an okay thing to kind of talk about and recommend it's not a drug it's a 
um, it's a supplement, that's what it's marketed as and you can buy it in the supplement section so I feel like that's okay. It's a natural hormone that your body produces to make you go to sleep at night, it gets you sleepy uh, and if your melatonin production is a little bit disrupted then you'll find it really hard to like go to sleep or stay asleep. So if you want to try and adapt to a new time zone quickly, I'd really recommend getting some. It works very well in my experience. When I went to America a few years ago, I did really struggle with jet lag going there because going east is often harder than going west. So I was like exhausted by like 8 p.m. at night and then awake at like 2 a.m. Like my body was like Ugh, completely out of whack. And it took me about three days to really like settle down into the rhythm, which is very normal for traveling across time zones. When I went to the UK and when I've just gotten back, I got back two nights ago, I honestly just don't even feel like I've had jet lag because I've been taking these supplements. Another thing that can really affect jet lag is drinking enough water and I am like pedantic about drinking it on the plane, like I, I go to pee every two hours or so, if not more. I've gotten really good at ninjaing out of seats uh, without disturbing my neighbour because she was asleep quite a lot so I was like hopping over without actually even touching her which is great. If you stay hydrated on the plane and like just keep drinking more water than you think you need uh, it will help lessen your jet lag symptoms because jet lag is essentially like feeling really hungover, drunk, um, you feel a wee bit out of it and Alex definitely felt a bit like that but that's because he's just he had three coffees and a wine on the plane and hardly drinks any water and I'm like you're gonna feel it. I thought I would do the rest of this favourites video with lovely Mr. Mortz. Number one favourite, right here. So many of my favourite sort of things that I did and saw in there involved you, so it'd be fun. Oh, probably the only damage from the plane ride was my sore muscles from sitting in the seat. <coughs> so, probably the first thing we should talk about, because that way we can eat them, or we'll continue eating them. <laughs> Percy Pigs! These are my favourite. Are yeah. oh, they really? I really like them. Well, I really like them enough to bring a few bags home, so. They went a bit crazy. They went a wee bit crazy. These are the little, like, Love's Penny ones. Don't like these as much. The little yellow ones are a bit meh. Try one. They kind of taste like banana or something. Like the original flavor is really nice. I love them. I think they're amazing. I think my favorite thing was just being in the different cities, you know? Experiencing the cultures. Mm. Yeah. I really loved Europe a lot. I wish we could have spent more time over in like other European cities. Mm. Like a Amsterdam. month is a long time, but most of it was in, in England. In yeah. There. I enjoyed our little excursions up to like Norfolk mm. and Albra and stuff, which you'll see the Albra vlogs coming after this video. So, um, as I say, we're back here, but our vlogs continue. <laughs> now, the thing I struggled with in London is a really odd thing to complain about. Where we were staying was so nice and so fancy. But we were, we were just there the whole time and there was no, like variety is the spice of life, you know? Yeah. So just like when you're stuck in the same place and the same meal all the time. Oh, woe is me. It's a silly thing to complain about, I, I know. Yeah. But like, we came home. And we're just so excited to have Mexican food. Yeah, we made nachos. So it was, oh, so good. Yeah. Like, and, and went out for lunch today and, mm. Yeah. It's mm. nice. I think that we, is it, true. Like, porridge for breakfast this morning was so good because. Because it was something different. Different. Yeah, you do get a bit sick of that buffet mm. with endless options. Yeah, again, <laughs> ridiculous. The other thing I thought were that was a favourite of this month is I passed my PhD. Yes. So for those of you that don't watch my vlogs, which you should, but because <laughs> I often say really exciting things in them, but if you didn't see my last vlog, um, I passed my PhD officially, which is very exciting. Yay! That has been a huge yay for this month. I do have a couple of corrections. It's very normal to pass with minor amendments. That's probably the most common pass type for a PhD. Very rare to pass with no amendments at all. Some people unfortunately have to do major amendments and mine thankfully will take me like no more than a couple of hours. I've already done some of them on the plane on the way home. <laughs> yeah, then I'll graduate. I think the graduation ceremony is in December, which is very cool. Um, and I will be vlogging that for sure. <laughs> you know, vlog, vlog is going a up on the stage. <laughs> Thanks. No, you'll be in the audience so you can vlog that part. No, you do. The, you have like the GoPro. The GoPro on my little bonnet. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> do it. Uh, Performing at St. Martin's was real special. Yeah, that was a, a big very, favorite. very cool experience. It was packed. Yeah. Absolutely packed. It was a gorgeous venue. 
Beautiful acoustic, beautiful building. We played pretty well too. We played really well. Yeah, it was good. But it was amazing. And just having like some of you guys come along to our performances and chat mm. to us after yeah, was thank really, you for everyone who came along. really nice. Appreciate it. Nice. Come see us in the flesh. I know. <laughs> I'm pretty hideous. <laughs> I always stand there being like, I hope they think I'm cool. <laughs> Oh, when you see someone in person. Well, it's hard because like... I know, especially for on, you. On YouTube, it's such a, um, an edited... It's an edited life. ...presentation, yeah. right? Yeah. At least you're in control of the editing. I know, I know. My my online persona is very much outside of my control. Because <laughs> Anna... I edit it. ...picks her favourite <laughs> bits. It's like me through your lens. Yeah. Which is odd. Interesting. Through my PG safe for the internet lens but yeah there's literally so much we could sit here for like an hour and talk about our trip and, and talk about everything but mm. what i suggest you do is just go back and watch the vlogs if you haven't seen them because they're so fun especially like amsterdam copenhagen vlog they were really cool yeah, like the they travel were the, they were the highlights for the, me the travel vlogs were really cool um we've got a few more coming out as well so stay tuned and enjoy those but anyway that is the end of our favorites video my favorites video featuring you Your a little favorite. bit but thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.